the next project we're going to refurbish the downstairs cloak room. Um, it's an old fashioned type cloak room, uh, just a toilet and a basin. Um, we've taken up the floor tiles that were running all the way through there. Um, we've now got the floor tiles underneath there, but I'm going to tile on top of them, a bit like they did before. So I've started tiling the floor of the cloak room now. Um, just doing these before we put the wall tiles on. Bought enough tiles for both the utility room and this one, so it's the same tiles. Just going to coat some fresh adhesive down here, so it's all nice and solid. Done the first lot last night, do the second lot now, and um, away we go. Right, I'm going to mix up the adhesive now. Um, I've got this bag of adhesive here. Um, which seems to be not fast setting, but not slow setting, but medium setting, so that's good. You got to mix it up with um, three and a half parts of that one to one part, part water. So I put, I put about a, a litre of water in here. I'm not going to mix up too much. I'm going to do about five tiles at the moment. So I put a litre in there, so I'm going to put two of these into here and mix it up. I'm not going to use my uh, mechanical one, I'm just going to use this. Right, I've laid the um, floor tiles down and um, I'm starting to do wall tiles now. Uh, I've left a gap in the bottom because what we're going to do is put some of the black floor tiles that are left over as a ceramic skirting around there. So that should look quite good. I've decided to lay these tiles in a brick formation. You can see that. Um, so that rather than straight up and everywhere, I'm just creating a brick style effect. So got the first couple of layers on now. I've got a big pot of wall tile adhesive and ground that I'm sticking these on with. And in the past I've used these and um, I've always fancied that they go, when you get towards the halfway through the um, pot, it goes a little bit off a little bit. So what I've done is I've stuck, and you see it. I've stuck some um, some cling film over the top of it just to keep the air out. So I'll just take that off now. Use that again. Oh my my versatile line there. Just place them all there. Into there. Lift up slightly. Can't put these in a, as a normal cross because um, it's got nowhere to go underneath. So you just got to. Right, well, we've done, we've done the um, tiling all around the, the floor and the walls and things like that. And down there, we're going to be putting the radiator on. I'm going to put the radiator on now, just there. I've got a single radiator here before the downstairs cloakroom. Um, I've only 
bought a, a small one, a 60 centimetres by 50 centimetre one. It's a single one. Um, you can work out the size radiators you need for a particular room by there's calculations on YouTube, wherever you might find it, to work out the BTUs you need to have the size radio where it's a single or a double radio if it's big bedroom, things like that. I've decided for this single um, radiator, it's only a small room, even if it's not quite as big as it should be, it's only, you're not going to be in a downstairs cloak room very long. So it, this should be fine for what it is, and it's going to sit nicely on the wall. We're going to be able to open the door wide without the, the old radiator that was on. There was a big towel radiator that was on there, um, taking that away, and that was preventing the door opening completely as well. So this one's going to slight, sit slightly away from the door against the wall, and it'll be just the job. So I'm going to open this one now, um, and I'm going to fit the... Um, Radio. I bought, bought so on top of that, I bought that one in Selco. I bought the thermostatic radiator valves in Screwfix because um, I wanted to go with this one. It's cheap enough. You can, some people don't bother with a um, thermostatic radiator valve for a small cloakroom like that. They just put the normal gate valves that are like isolate, uh, little small um, gate valves for that. I've gone for the thermostatic radiator valve because it's only about eight pounds to buy, eight or nine pounds to buy, and I thought, well, I might as well have that and use it. I'll open that one now, and we'll, we'll put it onto this radiator. The radiator comes with a bag of fixings, it comes with the, um, the top of the radiator end stop, and also a, a bleed valve at the top as well. So we'll put that one on as well. So let's open them up. These radiator valves are um, modern day radiator valves are bidirectional. Now that, what that means is that you can either put them on the flow or the return, depending which way you want to do it. Um, I understand from other YouTube clips and, and information online that older radiator valves um, should only be put on the return side because if you put them on the flow side, it struggles to get the if you've got them throttled down it struggles to get the water in there they can make a knocking sound so really it's better to put the thermostat on the return side that's what i understand but these are bi-directional so i'm going to find out now i can put them on either side but i'm going to find out which is my flow and which is my return so ideally i want to put it on the return side and then we'll dress the radiator with these and then we'll um, and then we'll go from there. That's the going to be the exit, uh, the yeah, entry one. We can fit that one on when we're finished. And this is going to be the. here just pull out horrible bloody painting there. What I'm going to do is just put some joint, some jointing compound on there. Okay. So before you put this on, or when you put it on, you need to make sure. Just do it up very, very loosely for now. Because you don't know. How much space you need? Throw us that on. That's okay. Even though it's, even though it's tight, it'll still go on. So that's no problem there. 
and I'll just take them off. Why they would do that, but still. So I'm going to put this metal one in there. So there's no need for PTFE on this one because it's got the rubber O seal this around it. Just making sure that there's nothing like paint that's going to stop it from sitting nicely on there. So you don't want to do it up too tight. Like I said, I'm not going to put the other one on um, because I'll do that when the radiator's on. And when it's all sealed up, I'll, and before I fill the system, I'll, um, I'll put some Furnox or, or some inhibitor into the system to clean out. Right, for positioning, I just, just chopped it up against the can or something. Um, so the door can open. There's a bit of a gap for the normal valve down there. Then there'd be a gap there for the um, thermostatic valve there. Right, I'm going to measure up now for where I need to put the brackets. I put the little tiny uh, protector things on the brackets. Put them midway between the slots that they need to go on. Not that that really matters, but anyway. So now what I'm going to do, I've marked on the wall where the top is and the sides are. So now if I measure from down the top and across, we go from one side. So I put those, because I took that off to get the height, put the protectors back on. Goes in the middle. Trim is going there, but that's perfect. That's that. So what I've done now is I've got the radiator on the wall. These are just loosely fixed here. So I'm going to actually plumb up out of the boxing in. There's going to be a piece of wood going along there, along there, along there, so I can actually put a, um, a plywood, a very thin plywood mat um, facing onto the boxing in. But I want to get up out of the wood, first of all, on both sides. So I've got that one is not fixed properly yet, but I'm just going to make it so I can mark off which pieces of wood I want. So that will be for the return, and this one will go in there, and that will be for the flow on here. Stick it in there, three six. Mm -hmm. Hot and cold water pipes to eventually the toilet and the and the basin over there. So I'm putting them in um, and then terminating them there because when the um, toilet unit goes on there, we'll notch out around these pipes and. Um, and then we'll just take it from there into the into the toilet and the vanity. So I'm just going to prepare those and then they'll be out of the way then. On the flow, I've decided to put the drain cock in. Uh, because it's quite a low point here, so I might as well do that. So I'm preparing this. It's going to be Copper to brass, but you can still solder it. So I'm going to just assemble that here. Do this first, and then it's set, and then I don't have to worry about it as long as I got it going in the right direction. I don't want it slightly dropping down, so I'll just chalk it up. All right. So I just use the a file and a spanner is slightly going to be cocked inwards but that's not going to be a bad thing because when you try and if you do need to drain it down it's going to be slightly out so that that's that's good really and 
And what you might didn't tell you is that I've taken the from the drain cock. I've taken it out because if you do that with that in it, you're going to burn or scorch or melt the rubber. So you take you undo that, you take that out, and then do your soldering. Um, so we've got the the toilet in there. We've got the basin in there, the flush, the toilet seat, the um, taps. That unit will be for the basin, for the basin to sit on. And then there's another unit in there, which is going to be the unit that you back the toilet into. This is the cabinet for the toilet. I've laid it on its floor, taken the fronts off, even by you, the front comes slides off and the top slides off. But my problem now might not be a big problem, but it, my problem, what I see is now, is that the toilet itself needs to be central to this to this cabinet, and the the flush, the hole in the toilet pan for the water to come and flush it away needs to come from the bottom of this cistern, and that needs to be central to this cabinet because we're going to put the toilet pan in the centre of this one. The thing is, the side entry valve for the cistern to, to fill it in that valve, it gets very, very tight just there. I don't know whether you're going to use a, um, a Yorkshire fitting or a compression fitting yet, I'm not too sure at the moment. It might be using, I might be using that one because I don't really feel that it's going to be too tight to, it's going to, be too tight to get a, a spanner on there anyway. So I might use that. But it's too tight. The problem with this is that it needs to be square to the thread so the seal can um, fit tight onto there. So it needs to be square. So you can't really cut anything off of here to give yourself an extra 10 mil because you, you may be a bit worried that the hacksaw blade will follow the thread so it'll be offset so you won't get a seal, it'll be like exaggerated, it'll be like that. So people have said you can pack out the inside with extra washers, it would bring that closer. But I worry that I'm not too sure about the siphon that the system in the middle may um, bang up against there, so I'm not too sure about that. If you put this nut on back to front, if you put the nut on back to front properly, you've now got a guide to keep it flat. So you could then put your saw against this and cut it flat. And then, if you're happy with that, just move it back about a couple of turns and then file it flat to this. There's a bit of a bodge, but it's the only way around I can make sure that I've got enough space to put this exactly in the centre of the cabinet. So I'm going to try that. Fingers crossed, it'll be, it'll be okay. Right, I've just taken 15 millimetres off now. Um, about that much, it's 15 mil. Put some washers for that. So that seems, obviously the proof is going to be when we've loaded it with water. Um, and then what I'm going to be doing then, is I've got a flexi anyway, but I'm going to put an isolator, that's going to go in there, like that, isolator there. So we can take this front panel off and isolate the toilet as well if we want to. Um, and then I can undo that, the flexi will drop back, that will be connected to the pipe down there. So, right, so 
What I've done now is I've marked off where I need to run the pipes to. Um, I've marked off the width of the basin cabinet, which is there, between there, there and there, if you see. And then I've marked up where the height of the panel at the back of the cabinet is there, is there. Um, and then I've also worked out the distance from the flexible taps that will go in the basin and what height I need to get to the taps there. So I'm going to be putting an, an isolator above the back of the, it's going to be, the pipes are going to be behind the back of this cabinet and stick it out there and then the isolator is going to be here so that I can turn the hot and the cold off as and when I want to and then the flexible tails will come down and sit, I'm not going to put them onto the isolator because the isolator is for olive fitting. Uh, I'm going to actually put a small piece of copper and then up to a, a, a half inch BSP mail so that I can actually screw it flat so there's going to be no chance of the rubber perishing from the thing. So I'll be doing that. Um, I've worked out that the waste is exactly where I want it to where the basin waste is going to be. I'm going to change that because it's a bit old and rubbish. So I'll put a new one of new S-Bend on there. I've got a little mirror here just to check around the back to make sure we got plenty of solder around there. There it is. And that one. Both sides. Brilliant. Just with this portable compound. I've used it for years. Years and years and years. Smear this all around here. So I'm going to keep the isolator facing out. That position there. Still facing out. I'm going to turn the isolator off because I want to pressure test pressure test it. So what I've just done now is I've connected the pipes there, elbows there, um, and then I've got my um, half inch BSP to an olive there and there, isolators there and there. So I can put the taps on once that's all together on there, turn the isolators on so even though the cold is on that side and the hot is on that side, I can sort something out there. So now that's isolated, the toilet isolated from the basin, I can turn the water on now and um, hopefully everything will be pressure tested. I've turned the water on, there's isolators out in the utility room that, that isolates that. And then we've got isolators here, here and here. And what I've done is I've just temporarily fixed the, fix the uh, taps that's going to go on the basin onto there. Just put them on. And everything's fine, there's no, there's no leaks. Um, I've filled this one up with water. I'll put six litres of water in there. Just to make sure they've got no leaks at all in there. I've just tried it once, it's fine. Um, no leaks from there. Um, just to check the fl flush works all right. Just need to push that in. This one. Right, I've jigsawed a piece out of there. Um, so that is going to be. I can actually put the pipes in, put the pipes through to the waste and to the water in that. I right, cut the, the hole out on the panel there. I right, cut this to size, measuring it for to go up in the hole of the cistern and to go in there as well. Um, on this particular one, it's got to stick out 60 millimeters from the front face of there. But because I understand these are quite difficult to put in there and this in there um, when it's in situ, 
I think what I'm going to do is put this in and then take, take the cistern off because I won't be able to get leave that in and then get that up in there. But if I take the cistern off and then just drop it down onto it, drop the cistern down onto there, then bolt the cistern to the cabinet, I think that would probably be a better idea. And then um, I know that that's nice and tight in there um, and then we'll worry about the waste pipe shortly. Right, I've worked out where the uh, holes that bolt down the toilet. So I'm going to drill them now. And um, when I open these and sort of mark them all out, I find that these are normally factory set at such an angle that it's, it doesn't, it's such a, an acute angle that it doesn't really reach the screw that goes through the porcelain. So I've had to bend it a little bit to make it come up a little bit. Um, so I can put it back a little bit and then screw it down through. Right, they're in, both of them. The um, only thing that went through it was the um, paddle blade thing. The, the other ones were useless, absolutely useless. So, paddle blades they are. Screw them down, we're not dead tight. So what I'll do is put the pan on when it's at its maximum and then um, take it off and put it back down. We're gonna take this thing out now and put this one this one in. It's not really a very nice job, but wash it up like we're on there. Just around the front of these. Stinks. Right, I've put the cabinet to the wall, cisterns in, um, the water input is actually going into there. I put the water output into there, that's fine, and also the waste going back up into that clay pipe. Um, it's not screwed down yet, just going to make sure everything's fine. Right, measured the distance over there, halved it and got where I need to do on there. I bought a whole saw which has got lots of different diameters to be used. Um, this has got to be 40 mil. So that I drilled through there so that we can put the push button there. Once I put the button in on there the button will go somewhere around there like that. And uh, this all should All you're gonna do now is I'm gonna put the the taps in. So we've got this tap, we've checked out, it works okay. Um, take that off of there. No. So we've got this little floating flange if you like with a um, with a rubber seal on there. Just gonna check that those are done up as tight as they can. Only needs to be hand tight, you don't use a any tool with that. So, and then put the other one in. And then, what we'll do is we'll hold that there right now. So we're getting as concentric as we can. Looks pretty good. So the washer will go on. Rubber will. 
in the retaining pin. And then the nut. Looking good. That's just done up finger tight. And we'll just check to see if that is square, which is not. So that needs to be brought back to about there. Like that. 10 mil. I suspect it's 10 mil. No. 11 mil? Yeah. Okay. These um, set of box spanners are really good. They're different sizes each end. There's three lots. Good combination. You know, Tommy Bar as well to do things up with. So um, that works out alright. All right. We need to do them up too tight. Really. Taps are on. Right, so the toilet's in. Uh, it's all plumbed in. I've notched the basin unit out for the pipes and also drilled, done some bore holes to um, take the waste pipe from there. That's all got brackets on there now. So um, now we put the basin in for that one. Right, the basin's on. I'm counting the saps and the waste. Just going to put the um, the handles on there. I'm going to put them there and there. So, the cook room's finished now. Right? The toilet cabinet is in, flush is working. Um, Working, basins in, wastes in, the, uh, ba the basin cabinet is in, the basin's in, water on, waste is in, everything's fine. All I need to do now is silicone the back of the basin and silicone around the bottom of the toilet and box in the pipes, which I've really done, virtually done anyway. So with this Coat room after putting the tiles on, plastering the walls, tiling the walls, putting the radiator in, putting the plumbing into the hot and cold to the toilet and the, and the basin. So I think we're finished.